Hi, David. Welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. Thank you, Marcy. Great to be with you. So first of all, I'd love to hear about what is the morganreport.com? It's a financial newsletter I started over 20 years ago, looking at the macro picture, the big picture of uh, economic forces that are changing so rapidly in our society. And the basic premise that uh, the paper money system only lasts for so long. Every fiat system that's ever been tried has ended in failure. So we're at that point now, and we are looking for a new monetary reset. No kidding. Yeah. So what do you think about uh, precious metals in 2021? I think uh, the precious metals, I'm not, you know, I'm considered a gold bug or silver bug by many, but actually it's just a transition point where the system starts to break down and a new system starts to occur. You see a transition where things of time held value like gold and silver are something that some of the population grab onto as sort of a safe harbor as this transition takes place. Mm -hmm. So I'm favorable to it in let's say a hedged way. In other words, like a 10% of your holding. You don't want to bet the farm that gold and silver are the only way to go. There's a lot of things to invest in outside the precious metals, but it is that safe haven that people seek when there's uncertainty in the currency system. Exactly. So another one, Bitcoin, that seems to be a big buzzword too. Everyone's talking about Bitcoins. What do you think about that in 2021? Very interesting. You know, I've thought about it from the inception. In fact, I was one of the early ones to learn about it through Robert Prechter. But um, I've always been a bit cautious. I wrote an article called My Two Bits about Bitcoin. And I said in an article pretty much holds true today, and that's probably five years old, that governments and central banks don't like competition. Now, I do. I am all for alternative currencies, gold and silver being two of the best through history. Bitcoin is sort of a hybrid between a technology and the store of value, but it hasn't come to the fore until recently. Wall Street really got behind Bitcoin the last few months, and I think that's going to drive the price even higher. Whether it's adopted uh, significantly still remains to be determined in my view, but I do think it shows where we are, which we started this discussion. We are in a transition phase. That's one alternative to this transition. So, so what do you, I, I'm really trying to understand all what Bitcoin is. I mean, like, why do you want to put money into Bitcoin? And like, there's a lot of fees that are involved in Bitcoin and transitioning money. And why do people like Bitcoin? Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people that are involved, uh, you know, get it. But there's a great vast majority that don't because, first of all, it's decentralized. Well, that's not really true. You have to go through Coinbase or Genesis or some platform, a KYC, know your customer. So you have to be totally identified. So it's really not as anonymous as cash. I mean, cash in pesos or cash in U.S. dollars or cash in Canadian dollars is more anonymous than Bitcoin in most cases. Yes, you can do anonymous trade. It is rather cumbersome and it's rather slow. So function as money, it doesn't do very well, especially with the volatility, but it's being um, put out mostly by the higher ups, the Wall Street types, that it's a store of value. But it's dependent on a, a database of computers that mine these algorithms that basically get a math formula they have to solve. And every time one's solved, they add to the block. So it becomes more and more complicated, not less and less complicated. So. I do think that it set the tone that the central banks are going to go to a blockchain-based currency system. But that doesn't necessarily mean that Bitcoin will be adopted. The blockchain will. So now we hear CBDC constantly, central banks, digital currencies. Well, central bank means just that, central. It's not a distributed ledger where you are free and you're independent. You're basically controlled by some central authority that takes your you know, name, rank, and serial number for you to proceed in the, their monetary system. I see. So what about global economy? Where are we? Uh, we're on a, <laughs> a transition again. I hate to overuse the word. But no, we are in a situation where we're having disruptions throughout the supply chain. For example, everything in modern society runs on computers, which basically means semiconductors. 
for a semiconductor to be uh, put to use, it takes, uh, it travels about 25 countries. So this is a very complex supply chain. So the more complicated something becomes, the more points of failure are available. So because of that fact, we're getting more and more stress in the system and it spills out into everything, energy, food, communications, hacking the security systems, mm -hmm. which we've been hacked. And that's a big concern of mine. I've been writing about in the Morgan Report for several months now. So we are becoming very, very vulnerable, vulnerable. to many vectors yeah. that could take place and disrupt us even further mm -hmm. than we've already been disrupted, not even taking into account the political strife throughout the planet. Just talking about basically the hardware side of things, not the software side. Right, right. So really quick, David, tell us about your book, Second Chance, and where we can find you. Morganreport.com. There's a book tab. You can pull it down. There's three books that uh, I've written. And Second Chance is about the upcoming final leg up in the precious metals. You really want to participate in that. But again, you just want to take a small bite. You don't need to eat the whole apple. Thank you so much, David. Really appreciate all of your insight because we can use it right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Marcy. It's been fun talking to you. You too, David. Have a wonderful time there in Mexico and have a great week. Thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.